Welcome everyone to yet another Tuesday News Day. Today it's again just me and Sinzar chilling and enjoying the continuation of the Mana Banner. Hey Sinzar. How's it going? Uh, it's, it's good, it's good. I'm a bit sad about not pulling Angela and uh, I'm assuming you did. Uh, I have not pulled yet. I was waiting for the news and then I'm going to wait till tomorrow's free poll is over. We're getting login tickets tomorrow morning and then after that I make the decision. Wait, 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 what do you mean login tickets? What's this? There's just a five-star ticket, and it, although the chances are extremely small... It, yeah, I mean, a ticket is a ticket. It, it's a 3% NV chance, right? And then, uh, yeah. The then pool is a bit three, big, but... <laughs> you have 3% by, like, what, 75 or 80 at this point? Yeah, yeah. yeah interesting, interesting. All right, so some freaky shit is happening on this banner, right? So if I understand everything correctly, Reese was a 7-star, right? Yes, both both versions of Rhi. She had two versions. They were both maximum 7-star. And one of them was super powerful because she, with the gear that we got from this vision, vision world, could evoke Fenrir and give us a 25% dark field, right? I wouldn't call the unit itself powerful, but she was a good unit. But like her personal damage was irrelevant. Yeah, but, but I mean, was, she, you would you would give Sephiroth twenty five percent more damage. Yeah, yeah, she was a great support unit. In yeah, JP, absolutely, exactly. So, but but here's the kicker. I guess we're not getting seven star Reese. We're getting a NV with like is this like both of the Reeses from JP in one unit? Uh, yep, the base form is the original Reese, which was completely and utterly worthless in JP. And then the shift form is Fenrir Knight Reese, which was the good version in JP. So we're getting both of them in the same unit, which is a kind of a smart way to do it. Because if they're going to convert to an NV, you know, they need all the animations and the sprites and all that. Well, at this point, it's already done. You've got literally two entirely sets of sprites and animations from two different units. You put them together, you've got an NV. True, but I'm afraid of what happens when you put them together, because what we saw with both Hawkeye and Angela is that, well, the, it was a low effort conversion, kind of, in that they didn't redesign the kits, they just added on stuff so that they would be NV relevant, right? Um, so I'm kind of thinking, what if that happens to, to this unit, right? Then that would probably mean the base form would be terrible. Uh, I mean, it was only terrible because it did really bad damage, and, you know, that is just a very simple matter of numbers. Um, the base form was like a Dragoon, so she has jumps. Now, if her jump is, like, boosted by 30% from the JP server, it's going to be worthless. If she's given, like, a 200x modifier like Neovision's Kane coming soon on her jump, well, then all of a sudden she's good. So it really just depends entirely on where they put that, that modifier at. Right. And we don't really know, because the um, unit details, of course, that we have right now aren't that, aren't that explicit. What we do know is her STMR gets upgraded. It seems to be like a upgrade of, um, or, or it reminds me of uh, Roberta's STMR a it's, bit. No, it, it's, it's, it's just bad. Let's just call it one. Oh, wait, it's with terrible. a spear. Oh, okay. It requires spears. It's like the attack power is irrelevant because attack power is like the easiest thing in the universe to cap these days. Yeah. Magic with magic with a spear is like basically no one, like dark rain in the future. Hey, hey, hey. Grimlord Sakura would like to have a word with you, my friend. Oh my god, no. And there's so, <laughs> and there's so many like universal materials that give like 70 to 80 attack power, like Angela's STMR or like, you know, all the other stuff like Kepka's STMR. That's that's 60, but it gives double hand. Like yeah. There's so many better sources of stats, and all the all the rest of the stuff is like, who cares? Twenty defense and spirit, whatever. A little bit of resist, whatever. Like, I mean, I would say it's fine. Don't matter. Yeah, but like, you, for example, the, the example you used was Roberta's STMR. That comes with a hundred percent jump damage. No, that's a harder oh, gear force stat. That's a much bigger deal than like a tiny bit of resistance. No, you're right. Roberta's is actually much better. But I would say this would have been fine. If it wasn't spear only, I think that really ruins it. Would it though? It, it's I mean, like, I don't it, know. Okay, so eighty percent magic like, is not bad on on, on the, a the, material the fact slot. That it's attack and magic is basically irrelevant because hybrid just don't exist anymore. Yeah, so, like eighty percent magic with nothing else relevant. I would rather use like Sarah's STMR, Kefka's STMR if I'm going double hand. Or um, Nagi's STMR or Gilgamesh's STMR if I'm going dual wield. 
Like yeah. there's just way better sources of magic out there than this, even if it was unrestricted. But it's not unrestricted, so it makes it even worse. Yeah, I guess I guess you're right. I mean, you're right. You're right. This is I. It's it's yeah. I guess it's a bit underwhelming, and her TMR is kind of the sa- well. Her TMR isn't actually that bad. It has hundred percent jump attack on a uh, two-handed spear, so that's not too keep, bad. Keep in mind, it's Reese only. It is literally only for her. Oh, of course, I missed that part. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes it much worse. Well, I, I mean, I guess it makes it fine for her, but of course, there are STMRs that are much stronger. Of course, slap, slapping, I guess, Mazurka on Reese is preferable. Although we don't even know if she's going to be a good damage dealer when it comes to jumps. So, yeah, like for herself, this is you know okay. There for for physical, there's better STMR options like Mazurka's STMR or something if you go on the physical side. Um, for the magical side, uh, there's not much better for spears. So. Yeah, yeah. I guess like I I don't remember what Grimlord Sakura's TMR has, but it's much lower. I I seem to remember like it has super low stats. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and, it, and again, it's like a spear mage. Even Grimlord Sakura goes rods anyway. So true, true. No, that's true. That's true. But so one thing that we do know she's getting upgraded is actually one of her uh, evocation skills in her shift. Um, and we don't know what is being upgraded, obviously. We just know that it is being upgraded. Uh, the Awakened Hexas um, ability. Yeah, uh, because because they don't give us the numbers, this, you know, could be, could say, be great, yeah. could, be, could be worthless. We really have no idea until we see the actual number. Yeah, and as I understand it still, Fenrir Knight Reese was a support unit. She was not a damage dealer. You would literally bring her to, you know, give Sephiroth 25% extra damage, basically. Pretty much, yeah. Sephiroth or Pearl or like Dark Rain, etc. Yeah. So yeah, this is also another reminder to everyone to farm that uh, gear. I don't remember what it's called, but it's the wolf-like name uh, clothing item. Because um, we're assuming it's going to be the same as in JP, where Reese needs to wear it in order to oh, enable whoa. the Fenrir field. Well, that, that we already know for sure, because that's in the game today. So yeah, that, that is the okay. exact same. You, you have to wear that to summon the field. Yeah, so so definitely make sure to get that. Um, <clears throat> although I guess she's limited as well, so unless you're going for her, maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, I, I'm a bit like, so, so okay, here here's a take. Um, it's not that rainbow or on-banner rainbows are easy to get. They're not. They're just slightly easier than NVs. But this actually, you know... This makes it harder, though. This is a lower rate now, and it's a dual NV banner. So it's going to be a much lower rate of actually being able to walk out with Reese. Much lower. Oh, you mean as opposed to her being the Abyssin's Awakening? Um, no, yeah, or or just as a 7-star unit on the banner. Because now... Oh, well, if she was just a 7-star and all you cared about was the field... Then sure, like it'd be easier to get just one copy from, um, you know, the, the summon tokens you pull three times. You, you get three summon tokens. You trade it in for the seven star. Done. Right. But uh, but then I mean I'm 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 glad she's a new business base because hopefully the kit is strong and then she does more for the party other than just bringing the. Yeah. No. 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 Absolutely. I really hope she's good. I'm just feeling it's going to be harder to get your hands on that field. Um, but yeah. I mean, again, I guess it's not a must-have, and uh, again, in GL, we're probably going to have them as split banners, so at least, at least it's not the shared banner problem, where you would have to be pulling for both uh, of them on the same banner. It is. You, you can scroll up to the, the step-up news, and uh, on the same like news page, it shows uh, they have in individual step-ups. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I mean. So that's good. That, that's very good. Um, do we know if they are the same coins? They probably aren't, right? Uh, the same coins as uh, for Angela and Hawkeye? Uh, no, those are completely separated from this. In fact, Angela and Hawkeye are not even in the random pool during this event. That's so they weird. Are, they are completely purged from this banner. Yeah, that, that's that's a bit strange. Not going to lie, but okay. Um, all right, and, and okay, but... Sure, that's Reese. Uh, we don't know much about her. Like, hopefully, I mean, at least she's going to be the twenty-five percent field unit. If she, on top of that, is also a capable damage dealer or strong support, then hey, that would be absolutely amazing. Hard to tell now, though. It would be. I am a little disappointed. Just, just to put a downside in her TMR and STMR. I know we kind of talked about that earlier, and I 
was very obvious that I was unhappy with their team art. Yeah. Point. But I was really hoping they were going to make it, like, you know, really good. Like You wanted 90% attack, right? That's what you wanted. I wanted something <laughs> that was like, I need to pull for this STMR. Even if the unit turns out not great, the STMR will live on, but that's just not the case for Reese. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. I, I guess that's the small consolation for all the Hawkeye shitters out there, that at least you got a really, really good STMR. But aside from that, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Could be good. I mean, we do have another unit on the banner. So, okay. So, let me just say this. The other unit on the banner is Duran, okay? No, no, no surprises there. We all knew Duran was coming. Senzar, who do you think is the troll of this banner? Because there obviously has to be a troll since the, it was such an obvious troll situation in the previous banner. Uh, it seems like if I had to guess, I would say possibly Duran. Because he was, say- he is a former NBA, right? Yes. And or he was, was an NBA like- JP. So he, he was an NVA, and he was okay-ish. Um, he had the same like play style as Angela, where he stacks his LB multiple times in the shift form. Um, it's non-elemental, but because he's physical, it was imbuable in JP. But also, because it was non-elemental and imbuable, unlike Angela in JP, they just lowered the modifiers to where it's not super relevant. Ah, right. Yeah, in JP, his max modifier, after stacking was 240, which is just bad. Yeah, that's Real bad. I mean, that's worse than Hawkeye, and we just said Hawkeye is a troll unit. It's a whole lot worse than Hawkeye, yes. Yeah. Okay, but but we don't know. I mean, again, that could be upgraded. First of all, what we are seeing here is he's getting his trans shift upgraded. It's Okay, first of all, I think it's really weird that thematically these units, I mean, in Trials of Mana, what you do is you change classes, right? They're not trances. You change classes. So... To me, it's really weird that his brave shit is a trance because it's four turns duration. Oh yeah, and it forces you back to the old class, which is not how it works in the game. Yeah, it's, it's like super. It, it, it's just weird. Like you know, they sh- he should have just had true brave shit. It's not like he has a huge cooldown either. It's like four out of five turns is going to be shifted anyway. So it's yeah. I just thought it was weird. Um, but yeah, so what can we say more about the unit before we go into the kit? Well, his STMR is really underwhelming. Um, Unfortunately, because it's a sword and swords are one of the bad two-handers, that does get fixed in a future patch where variance oh. makes us not have any bad two-handers anymore. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah. every two-hander has the same variance, hopefully? Close to the same, but basically, yeah. Uh, like okay. currently, if you're using a two-handed, like katana, great sword, sword, spear, these are all really bad for variance, unless you're like Sephiroth and you just have to go that route. But um, you always want to go with a good variance two-hander, like Fist or Gun or Harp, etc. Right. Uh, um, and yeah, and this is a two-handed sword, which means it's going to have 1.3 variance, which is really bad. Uh, and yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, low yeah. attack, it has Dragon Killer, one of the easier killers to gear for, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, like, eventually, with the variance patch, it'll be fine. But even then, it's still a, a, a sword with... 180 attack is sort of low for STMR tier. There's a lot better out there. Yeah. Also, um, like Sword and Perils, who's even doing Sword and Peril? We've got Alina that no one brings anymore. We've got Noctis and Arden that no one hey, brings Hey, I still bring her anymore. I don't have the other options. Also, she's still in Perils for Terra, I'm just saying. I guess. Maybe they'll give Duran a Sword and Peril. That, 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 that would be good. Oh, then, then I could bring someone else to Imperil for Terra. That's nice. Yeah, I mean, uh, that could be interesting. That could be interesting. Um, he also has a TMR. It seems to be a 50, 50 attack uh, accessory uh, and a 50% attack with the sword. So I guess, like, eh, fine. It's, it's, if you're using swords anyway, it's fine. Like, there's better options out there, like stewards, uh, stewards, heals, or whatever. So Yeah. It's, but that is, that is an STMR, so. True, true. Yeah, I mean, TMR, TMR level-wise, it, it, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Um, he's getting the same upgrade that Reese is getting. We did not mention that, but they're getting EX abilities. They're getting the standard kit of like stat boost as well as the fill LB if you have EX2. Um, and what we know about him is that in his Brave Shift, he's getting an upgrade to his True Spin Slash, which seems to be a chaining attack. Um, but it seems to be his LB fill moves. I don't know. That's really weird. Uh... Well, it's it's just it's just his regular chain in JP. It's absolute mirror of equity. It's also AOE, so you can't even use it. In, we can't really use it in uh, 
like dark visions and stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, it just really depends on his modifiers. If his modifiers are high, yeah, enough, I mean, if they are five thousand, then sure. But yeah, so we we'll I really, I really wish they would give us like the numbers in the news. That'd be a lot better. It would, it would. But now we get to you know guess who is the troll. But I am, I am very much like leaning towards your side here. I think it sounds like Joran is the troll. It sounds like. He's he might get the Hawkeye treatment, although he doesn't even have an STMR. Um, so let's see. I mean, on the other hand, we don't know. Maybe his LB got like buffed to 500x, and then yeah, of course he's relevant as shit. But uh, let's that see. That would be nice. Yeah, that would be pretty nice. Uh, but let's see. I mean, I, we could be wrong. It could be very cool to come in here on Thursday and see that oh my god, Juran has. 500x LB modifier and can get up to 7,000 attack. Okay, then then sure, he's no longer the troll. That would be nice. I like these units. I mean, I'm going to keep pulling dailies for them, um, so uh, I really hope they do them some justice. They are limited, too. I, I always felt that limited units are fine to be OP, because they are limited, right? Like, um... Well, yeah, that's kind of like how they had Laura Croft. Like, Laura Croft is insanely OP because she was limited, and then, but unfortunately, then they had, like, the Halloween banner where that wasn't the case. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Halloween banner. Well, I mean, yeah, no, that's true. I'm I'm honestly still hyped about the Christmas banner. I'm still thinking about whether Eldrin is getting an upgrade or not. Like, since our ask your source, or no, 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 don't ask. Tell your source in a demanding way that Eldra needs to get a fucking upgrade at Christmas, okay? He needs to be good again. I'm going to predict that Eldrin gets EX2 and EX3 buffs. It'll make him better, but he'll still not be meta. Don't yeah. Me. Well, to be fair, he is a hybrid, so it's hard to make a hybrid meta. But it would still, like, I don't know. He deserves better, okay? He deserves a seat at the big table because he was a limited envy. He has a fantastic design in every way. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, let, let's go. Let's go. Let's let's yeah. go of Eldrin. We're gonna talk probably more about him as Christmas comes closer. Yeah, what they're saying in the chat, I agree with. If you just change Eldrin to pure physical, that's like a fix right there. Well, yeah, I guess that's that's actually well. I, I'm still I'm still thinking. You know, we're in the era where it's really hard to do hybrids in the game the way the game works, right? So. I mean, JP just deleted hybrid from existence for a reason. They're not good. And people are going to get pissed at me for saying that. They always get pissed at me when I say that. But it's the truth. Hybrids are not good. Well, you know what? You should preface that. I mean, it's not that hybrids aren't good. It's just that hybrids aren't good in the game as it's designed, right? Like, there's nothing potentially wrong with the idea of a hybrid. And there was a time in this game when hybrids were the strongest units. But... It's just that the way the game works right now, you literally gain nothing from being a hybrid. You just get drawbacks. So yeah, like like you're on any fight that has an, an unequal stat spread, you're just immediately handicapped. On dark visions, it's handicapped. You're splitting gearing across two points. Variance only works for physical, so even a double hand hybrid is getting a half penalty because variance doesn't work for the magic portion, yeah. and they can't boost the modifiers because of that. It's it's just a huge mess. It was it was a mistake to try hybrids, and they should have just like JP did. They dropped it. They realized it was a mistake. We're never doing it again. Done. But global. Yeah, I, I still trying. I still stand by by my original opinion that I think the best implementation of hybrids in this game is to actually have units that shift. So like Lastwell, kind of your magic yeah, in one bad. form, physical in yeah. another. That's an awesome design where, like, a physical switches into mage form with a brave shift. Perfect design. Or, like, as mentioned in the chat, the War of the Visions Gilgamesh was the proper way to do it. You have skills that are pure physical and pure magical in the same kit. That's a right. great way to do it because then you don't have all these problems with me the hybrids mechanically. Yeah, and you, and then you can also choose gearing. And it's very rare that you're going to need both physical and magical for a trial, so you'd always gear for what you're going into anyway. So, I mean, I don't want to drop the idea that there is this cool notion of a unit that is a both master of swordplay and magic. I think that's pretty cool. But it definitely needs to be done in a different way. So, yeah, like, it would be very cool if Eldrin 
got you know a, a just a physical move for instance or or um, or they split them between like his base form and, and shift form or something i don't know um, although you have to admit you have to admit or maybe this is just me i don't know chat chime in but it is pretty cool seeing a unit that has really high both attack and magic stats i mean that looks very satisfying in your unit list I mean, sure, it, it's, it looks cool, and, like, the idea is cool, like a master of magic and, and melee or whatever. Yeah. But it's, it's, it, just, it just doesn't work mechanically in Brave Exvius. No, and it's a shame, because, like, you know, my heart is still tied to the very first releasion, release of Fryavia, all right? When she came out, she was so strong. In fact, she was so strong, people didn't even know how strong she was. There were posts on Reddit, and like, oh, my God, Fryavia is so bad, you should all get Orlando. Like, she was absolutely crushing it, and I love that. Like, that that's some of the best moments in the game are from from that age. I still, like, have this... I still have this special mo- place in my heart for hybrids, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it, 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 that's, that's the same thing we were talking about earlier. Like, you could take the worst unit in the game, and as long as you slap that modifier high enough, they're all of a sudden the best unit in the game. Right. It's the same thing with hybrids. Like, if you just crank that modifier through the roof, that just overcomes all the handicaps of being a hybrid. Yeah, because, I mean, all the handicaps are all just about a damage boost they're lacking, right? They're getting exactly. half the variance, for instance. Well, people, give them a people, higher mod. Yeah, and people in chat are mentioning the original Alina. That was why the original Alina was good, because hybrids were so flawed. To fix that, Gumi just, like, tripled her modifiers from the standard of the time. Yeah. And all of a sudden, well, her modifiers are so high... Even though hybrids have all these flaws, it just doesn't matter because we bumped the modifier so high. And yeah, that's like a, that's, that's like that's like the band aid fix. It's really messy and not a good way to do it, but it does work if you do it that way. I mean, I do hope that Eldrin gets something, and that could be what he gets. And if he's bumped to, you know, maybe he has morale damage. Fuck, we don't know. Like Ibarra got morale damage. Sinzar, talk to your fucking source, okay? This is this is your duty. As a member of this beautiful FFB community, you need to talk to your source. We'll see what happens on Christmas, although we are getting a little <laughs> bit off topic from the trials of Man. Yeah, okay, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. It's me. I'm going on these weird-ass tangents. Let's actually jump back into the event. So we're getting a new event, a MOG event, called Dark Castle. Um, is there anything valuable here to talk about? Like, there are a bunch of weapons. Um... Not really. Like, the gear is pretty low-end. Even for, like, newer players, this, this claw is terrible because you can get a better claw from a one-turn one trial, the Ultras trial, trivial to OTK. You get the you get the, the Aqua Claws. Uh, or that from a di- that could be from a different trial. In any case, from an ancient trial, yeah. you get it in two seconds. Uh, this is a flail. Flails are completely worthless for DPS because um, one thing, no one uses flails. Another thing is the rare mod on flails are HP. So it's hard to gear for item world. It's low stats anyway. No one's going to use this. Yeah. The spear, same thing. It's a hybrid spear. No one uses spears. The ones that do are dragoons. You can get a free spear from the Final Fantasy XV Chronicle for jump damage. This is bad for dragoons. As yeah, well. I was thinking, like, who did they design this spear for? Honestly, like, it looks like it's designed for Reese, right? Because it's a hybrid spear. So it has attack and magic. Yeah, but, but her Reese has her own better. TMR, so it's way better. <laughs> yeah, so so why does this spear exist? Like, does it exist for players that just started the game, got a Reese, and can't afford to Moogle her, so they use this spear instead for like two weeks before they can Moogle Reese? I mean, considering that we get literally infinite Moogles from this vision world, you can buy them in infinite supply for almost dirt cheap. Yeah. That that doesn't really justify. It. I, I wonder if I should just grind more to get more Moogles. I don't know. The, the the hoarder in me really says go for Moogles, but honestly, I like I don't need them. I have so many, so I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and and we're we're actually wait we're 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 collecting nuts. That's that's what we're getting. We're getting nuts. Okay. Okay. Do you like um, nuts, Sinzar? I do think it's like the fairy walnuts, which is like a, a major thing of the mana series. But uh, yes, that is that does seem to be accurate. We're getting some nice nuts for this event, right? Okay, okay, okay. It's and it's just a normal Mog King otherwise, right? Noth- nothing strange. Yeah, and um, just for the amusement factor, I'll mention, do you notice if you look on the... the, the background, like, do you, does this look familiar to you? The background of the the mog event 
the background of the which background do you mean like in the news uh, if, you, if you go to the mog news scroll at the very top you see where it says dark castle and behind that you got the little flames a little like rum you know oh yeah oh, oh those, those are the eyes right okay okay um well well this background is the belladonna background and the belladonna sprite this is the mog event it came out years and years ago in jp this is where they like emergency oh. patched in a copy paste boss for the dark visions or the vision world in jp ah, ah okay is, this is the original source of belladonna the same background the same music the same sprite all of this came from the vision, the Mog King that was long in the past. This is like well, one of the original Trials of Mana Mog Kings where Duran and all were first introduced. Well, I get it. I mean, I mean, Sablefar is really easy to cap, so I get, I, I understand them going he, into crisis no, mode. No, 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 no. He's easy to cap on Global because Global nerfed his ass into the ground. He was not easy to cap in JP when he was originally the final boss. Oh, really? I thought you, but but you said on last Newsday that still many people capped him. Well, well, like there were like 120 people that capped him during the first day, and at that point is when the JP devs started freaking out and uh, put in the new boss. Right, right. I mean, I get it. I get it. Like 120 people would get 200k lapis. That that sounds juicy. Um, I wonder what well, it's it, going to turn out to, to be when we, because we're getting Belladonna too, right? Yes, we're getting Belladonna on um, on Thursday. Was that, was that, I guess you can kind of mention because that's part of the news. Yeah, she's yeah. releasing on Thursday for Global. Yeah, and she is just a standard uh, final boss. She has high – well, she has no preference on defense or spirit, and she seems to be dual race beast human, um, which makes a lot of sense. Yes. Uh, so is there anything, like, worthwhile knowing about her, like – what type of uh, team comp would you do and so on? Belladonna does AoE, non-elemental magic, and single target gravity damage. Um, there's like two options here. You can either like take steps to reduce the damage taken to very small amounts with like a really, really bulky magical tank and then using a provoker with like 5% health remaining so the gravity does minimal damage. Um, that, that'll all reduce the damage taken by quite a bit and your damage damage taken score will still be pretty high. On the other hand, you can completely ignore damage taken, get a zero on that score, and focus your entire party on dealing more damage. Um, your prop, that, we don't know until it releases, but that is most likely going to result in a higher total score as opposed to trying to mitigate the damage. Because if you mitigate the damage really well, you're going to get something like a 9,500 score in damage taken. You're going to lose about 500 points you're going to get 9,500. On the other hand, if you don't take a tank and you fill that tank slot with an extra DPS unit and you hit the boss a minimum of 800,000 damage harder, you're going to get more than 10,000 points for damage dealt. Uh -huh. And you're going to gain, gain a lot more than you would by adding a tank. But it depends. It depends on the tuning. So, you know, yeah, and, and, and I guess also sure. it depends on your roster, right? Like if you, I mean, not everyone could fill maybe that tank slot right so um sure, sure. i mean I, I don't know she she's she doesn't have any elemental preferences right so it's going to be the, the the standard crew of lara tifa and sephiroth and maybe carton going into this right angela as well i guess now but that also depends yeah. on gearing yeah uh angela should be really good um especially if you're going for the uh the ignore damage taken thing and if that that's the case you can spend 45 turns setting up, and Angela will be max stacks, not a problem. Um, Wait, um, but so she does AoE non-elemental, right? So you do need, like, some source of recovering your HP, I guess. Uh, well, the boss does, yeah. You, you could have summoned Lakshmi once per once per 10 turns. That, that's, like, the damage the boss deals is pretty low regardless. Oh, all right, as, long, all right. as, long as, as long as you break her. Okay. All right. Very interesting. But I like, I like the fact, okay, it, it's, I, I like the fact that you have the option of kind of doing both. Um, either going max damage if you have the units and the gear, or going instead saving those 9,500 points or something um, by trying to take as little damage as possible. So, so I, I, I like the premise, to be honest. Let's see. I, I still don't know which path I would take. I Right now, I, I don't feel I have, you know, that many damage dealers, to be honest. Like, I have Lara, Sephiroth, and Tifa. I don't have Carton. I don't have Angela. So, you know, maybe I'll just bring a tank and a provoker because 
I, I don't really know what else to put into my team. I don't really know what else. Like, I could what bring you, Sky, but I'm not sure Sky is going to do the 800k you we're talking about. Well, there's like old units like Zidane. I mean, Zidane is still a, was a 290x modifier finisher or something? Like, he's still good. Yeah, I guess Hawkeye. I just did, did just get him. Uh, yeah, could like he... Hawkeye. I mean, like, Hawkeye is is not like a bad unit. He's just not as good as the, the good units we have. But if you don't have all those good units, I mean, Hawkeye is still, what was he, 280 or something, I think? Yeah. Max yeah. And there you go. So no, Hawkeye was 200. And, oh, was it? Okay, yeah, 280 or 90. I don't remember, but probably 280 because well, no. 90 yeah. seems like a weird number. Yeah, so it's like it's certainly behind the meta, but it's not like he's, you know, I don't know, Furiant here or something. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, 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 no. And actually, to be honest, I was surprised by how useful I found uh, Oliveira. So a lot of people were doing full farm teams because they had Carton uh, or Ibarra, and they could go in with like either a Carton team or Ibarra GLS team uh, to do like a full farm team on the Vision World. Holy shit! Like. Oliveira beats the boss on their own, okay? Well, yeah, because Oliveira is a tag chainer, which is, um, you know, you don't, you don't need change for that, so it's awesome. And still did respectable fucking damage, all right? Like, I was surprised. I gave him, I gave them zero support. Like, no amp, nothing. They just did turn one, there I'll be. That's it. Yeah, uh, uh, it's the same same thing with o o Oliveira. Like I, I was kind of harsh on Oliveira because Oliveira is behind the meta, and I feel like a new unit should never release behind the curve. True. So, and Oliveira I... is behind the curve, but he's not like in the gutter. He's still usable and decent. It's just like he's not at the top, which I personally feel like new units should be at the top. No, definitely. And especially if you're an NV unit that kind of isn't bringing a huge amount of support, right? So your your main role is still being this damage dealer. Well, then, you know, you kind of need to. Uh, although I guess like saving grace here is, is morale damage. So they still have a place in, in morale teams. True. Anyway, so this seems to be pretty interesting. So I want to ask you one more question before we wrap up for the day, which is, so there is this thing in the Dark Castle where we're actually getting to fight uh, three bosses, it seems. What's that all about? We're getting like Nemesis, Zenoa, Harsipete, and Belladonna. Oh, those, it's it's just like the the daily boss or whatever. It's like, oh, okay. they're, they're going to be slightly more challenging in the Mog event, but for 99% of players... You're gonna turn one. It it's it's whatever. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because like one of them seems to be at least dropping a five star ex ticket. So there's that. There's that another chance of <laughs> getting an Angela yeah. for me. Yeah, it's, it's just it's just like those you know bonus bosses. Like um, what was that that Tomb Raider boss? The girl I forget her name, but it was like you know the, the special boss. You fight one time, you kill her once, you're done. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So this is not uh, because you. I, I thought you said daily. So this is not something where you're going to be returning every day. This is just like you kill them once, you get your rewards, you get the fuck out. Uh, I don't remember if it was daily. This is like this. This event in JP was like literally like 2017 or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember if it was okay. daily or not. It might say it in the news. Well, um, no. It just says they're going to be available after maintenance. But it does say clear the missions with your own party to get... So it probably is one of those that you just fight once, yes. Probably, yeah. This is going to be very interesting. And I'm going to say I am a bit excited about Belladonna and see just how high I can rank on this list. Like, I am so far behind the people that have the proper rosters right now. So let's see. But maybe it will give me a chance to just use Hawkeye. Because, you know, I was cursed with him. I could even EX2 him if I wanted. Uh, so maybe I should. It's like, it just I mean, feels such a waste, but yeah, what should I do? Hawkeye is good for, um, like, turn one OTK setups, because he can do a 90 break and a 130 dark in peril for Sephiroth, which is convenient. Yeah, but I mean, sure, okay, dark in peril, but Sephiroth brings his own, and... Uh, well, 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 I'm not talking about for turn one OTKs. Um, well, I guess, technically, on turn one, Sephiroth could use his base form LB. I yeah, exactly, because that. you're not stacking turn one. You should be using the, the base form, yeah, because it's so much better. It's so slow and so irritating at the time. It is. I, it, I is. Mean, it, it is. It is technically better, and I, I just never do it because it's such a headache at the time. I use the shifted LB always. It also looks cooler, to be honest. Like the shifted, uh, the shifted LB looks much cooler, so you'd want to use that. But still, yeah, no, I don't know. Like Hawkeye, like I mean, also just I don't know why we're talking about Hawkeye. I guess it's because of my pain of getting Hawkeye. But 
he's I mean, if you don't have Lara or Venera, he's still a fantastic unit because he's a source of that 90% break. So we shouldn't be too harsh on him. It's just that if you have oh, yeah. Lara, he really doesn't, you know, play well. And and actually, <laughs> it's, how long has it been? Two months, three months? We still don't have more than two crowns to use on lock, assuming someone wanted to. So how often did you get these crowns on JP? Ah, uh, you got, like, between one and two per month in the beginning. So we got, like, the two initial crowns, and just never see them again in Global. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's very, it's very but this has happened before. Like, we are not great at upgrading units. And I don't know why. Again, I, I, just, I just don't know. It seems like free content just released the crown battles so we can get more crowns. I would like to unlock crowns for Terra, not because... I think they are good, but because it's Terra and I want to make her great, I soon have two EX3 Terras, okay? So, you know, I, it's just a shame we're not getting these things. Yeah, it's like, where, where's our upgrades, Gumi? Yeah. Well, you should know, motherfucker. You should ask them, okay? I'm asking now. Where's our upgrades? I want, <laughs> um, who is it? Uh, Medina's Neo Visions Awakening. Like, oh, yeah, it? true. We skipped that entirely. She was pretty good, right? I mean, she wasn't, like, top of the meta, but she was definitely very strong, and I was wanting to use her. And, cause oh, on, yeah, on and JP, Demos. On, on, J, on JP, I don't have her, so I was wanting to play with her on Global. Yeah, and Demos is just saying in chat, also, where the fuck are the CP Noctis upgrades to? That's also another unit we just never got. Oh, uh, well, to be fair, we're, we're not due for the Noctis stuff quite yet. That That isn't late yet. No, uh, or or sorry, I, I well, I mean, the Crown Prince Noctis upgrades, you know, the Seven Star Noctis upgrades we should have gotten when CB Noctis came out. Oh, 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 the Seven Star Noctis, yeah, that that is that is super late. That's that's probably never coming. <laughs> yeah, no, of course it's never coming. It's absolutely, it's obviously never coming. It's just such a shame. There was really no reason for it. Um, I don't know. Anyway, let's not complain about these things. Let's be happy about this new Trial of Mana banner. I think it's going to be still a lot of fun. So. Uh, you know, let let's do the best of it. Is what I'm trying to say. Hope so. Do we? Did I miss anything? Is that it for this week? Ah, uh, that's pretty much it. We got the new banner, the new um, the new Mog King, and then the new boss on Vision World. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Let's see. I'm still excited. I might buy a couple of temples for this banner too. It would be pretty cool to have just more trials trials of mana units. Um, but yeah, let's let's see who's the troll. Let's see who's the troll. All right. Thanks, everyone, for chilling. Have a great week. See you next week.